Hey guys, welcome to the show. Randy Sklar here. I'm Jason Sklar. And we are the Sklar Brothers. And this is our daily podcast, our new venture that is called Sklar Bro Country, the virus episodes or the pandemic pods. I don't know. What do you like better? I like two guys, one couch. All right. We are distanced socially safely, although this is about the distance we were in the womb. The, you know what's interesting about this pandemic? Uh, I will say, if if I'm looking for what, a silver what's lining. interesting about this pandemic, you know the one thing that's yeah, interesting about this pandemic. What is the one thing that's interesting about the pandemic? Uh, and then we'll tell you why we're doing this podcast. But go ahead. The thing that's interesting for me, mm-hmm. uh, silver lining, if I had to find one, uh, and there are many. There's too too many to count. Uh, is that I don't have silver to, linings right now are like toilet paper. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Everyone's got a bunch. Easily accessible. Uh, so I um, people are hoarding them. Hmm. I don't have to touch Randy's skin. Now, I don't right. often do this. In my no. lifetime, I can maybe count on one uh, bare hand mm-hmm. the amount of times I've touched skin to skin on my brother. And I will say that when I touch Randy skin to skin, it feels like, you know how when you fall asleep on your arm? Yep. And, and it, it tingles goes, for a little bit. Then it, it goes dead. You get dead arm. Dead arm. It does not feel like your arm. You So you bang it against the wall a couple times just to get the feeling back in. Why would you ever bang anyone's... Someone arm. else's arm it against the wall. It feels like you're banging someone else's well, arm. It feels what, like an arm. Why would you do that? I don't know. You're just trying to pull yourself back. Okay. It's like touching Randy is like touching my own cold, cold dead self. Dead self. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. So uh, pandemic has made it socially acceptable to not even have to do that. Yeah. Never. So thank you. All right. Glad we got we're, that out of the way. Glad that's out of the way. But the reason we're doing this podcast is that we, like you, are trying to make our way through this crazy new normal of a world and uh, we looked out there and we saw that nobody is doing a podcast so we this said time. look this is fertile ground it's wide open no what we wanted to do was give you a break because we're looking for it in our days and looking for it in our times a break some sort of a a 30 minutes a day not that much you might put the airpods in the headphones in and walk around walk outside for 30 minutes and just give yourself a, a respite from the news we're gonna post the video of this on youtube you can watch us you can see where we are hunkered down in a bunker. This is our um, ta- this is my basement. This is our take on the world as we see it every day. And we want to give you a little something every day to make you laugh, give you a little escape, because there aren't that many escapes anymore. No, there are no escapes. There are only escape rooms. Yep. Uh, and that is scary and mm-hmm. sad. Uh, we'll talk about the world as we see it, as we're moving through it. We'll give you some recommendations of things to watch. Things and, to listen to. But we're not going to tell you to do it. No, but we'll recommend it harshly. If I cough at all, and I've coughed a few times, I will douse myself in Hello Kitty Purell. He's going to drink it. Uh, Randy is convinced I have the virus. Yep. Uh, I'm not so sure. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the fact that there are no sports. So So, this this is something that is... How are you coping? I'm not coping well. Right. And the way I'm trying to, I guess, cope is that I am watching... Old games in their entirety as Same they are presented me. to me on television. Right. Not even on a, YouTube. No, on television. Not even uh, teams that I care about or like. Right. The other day I watched 1979 Cubs versus Phillies, the yeah. 23 to 22 game. Pete, Pete Rose. Pete Rose. Betting you, know, on the game. you know he had skin in that game. Uh, he did have skin in that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, he The way he slammed the ball down mm-hmm. from first mm-hmm. base. Mm-hmm. When he bounced the ball... The Cubs fans boot him. Here's the thing that I was taken by when I was watching this: the, the crowd How at the great Cubs was game. His hair, the era, his hair was unbelievable. It was like a hair helmet. Mm-hmm. It looked like, like they were both spaceballs. Yeah, space. It was a space balls helmet. helmet. So what I was taken by when I when they panned to shots of the crowd, yeah, nobody was wearing Cubs gear. No, not one person. It was middle of summer. They were all wearing jeans. <laughs> And no shirts. So je- like, jeans is it. They're so hot. They can't. Ha- they, they had to take had their to shirts take, off. By the way, did we person- not know that shorts were an option in right. 1979? We had shorts in 79. The, the truth of the matter is that like jeans of any sort. It, it honestly, it looked like it could have been a concert. Jeans. It of, did not. It did not look like a cup. Listen, game. jeans on tells me that you are willing to be hot. For whatever you're doing. Shirt off tells me you don't care what the public thinks. Right. But jeans on says you care what someone thinks. And let me say, in 1979, is that what you did? Nobody, so, nobody worked out. Yeah, no one, no no, one, no one was oh, in shape. Nobody worked out. 
people were thin, but they were not in shape. <laughs> There's a difference between you could drink more back then. It but was nobody. It, it was out. fascinating. I watched that. I watched a bunch of other games. I watched the '92. I mean, I was watching the Fab Five and watched their tournament run. I watched the University of Michigan uh, 1989 men's basketball team and their uh, semifinal win uh, against Illinois to get into the championship game against Seton Hall. And they that were amazing, fascinating. Illinois team. It was amazing, Illinois team. And what was amazing to me is that no one had tattoos. No one had tattoos, tattoos. and no one took three point shots. No, one, yeah, Michigan, there were like eight three pointers in the it. game. That's it. A cup like the three point line was something that people knew. It was of. there. It was like something that people knew about, but didn't really. They didn't realize. Hey, didn't every time we go it. down, we could get three. Yeah, we get three points instead of two. Nah, we can Here's get one thing. and a half amount of points every time if we like, start getting good. Nobody for did analytics at all, so it was fascinating and interesting to see how that was. But it was, it you know what? Because it it transports me to another era, right? So I'm not thinking about what's going on now. I'm actually thinking about what life was like back then and you how know, simple and beautiful. It that's was. right. That's right. So what? That's what we're going to try and provide with this podcast and talk about. What you guys are doing, you can tweet at us. We're at Squad Brothers, and you can ask us questions. We'll try and answer those. You can give us suggestions. Tell us things that you're watching, you're enjoying. Somebody uh, sent us, this was so funny, the show Beyond Belief, uh, where it, it feels like a Ripley's Believe It or Not type show. Which that show is... Ripley's Believe It or Not? No, Beyond Belief is just a little... I mean, it's a little past what we could fully take fathom. in. them, yes. Um, and so... There was someone slowed down what the guy was, the host was saying. Now, to, this is an old bit that they did on Jimmy Kimmel a lot. Mm -hmm. Drunk Bush, I think it was yeah. drunk President Bush. They or, slowed down what this guy was saying. And it sounds, I mean, it sounds like he's drunk. Because he asked like a depressed. lot of questions at the beginning to get you into each episode and they strung them together. Each of those questions. Have you ever seen a plumber? <laughs> <laughs> you ever go to a truck stop? Fun. Yeah. Hilarious. So I highly recommend that. Check that out. These are fun things to do and, and take your mind off it. We are hoping that this podcast starts with a few people and those people share it with other people. We're even willing to take some people sharing it. Even if it, you don't listen to it and you, you carry it to another person, person and you share it with that other person and then suddenly there are it's it multiplies in it like goes a viral, huge way, really, and people will then understand that this podcast then takes over what everybody is doing. And you can't even contain it. It's like the movie Outbreak, which I don't know if you know. Their marketing plan was put it in one theater and then see what happens, and see what happens, and then you saw what happened. Three thousand uh, theaters after the third weekend. These are scary times. I'm not going to lie. I'm I I feel nervous uh, a lot. I do. I have had a cough, and everyone around me is like, "You're yep, you're dead." You're dead, dead and you're going to kill everyone around you. That's and that's that, too much. you should not be hearing that from your six year old daughter no, on a regular but basis. She tells it like it is. Yeah, she tells it like that's it what is. I like about her. She does not. Uh, she cuts through the clutter. So my thing is, I drove over to Randy's house to do this, yeah. and and as against a, Governor Gavin Newsom's direction. I don't even know who that guy is. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I was driving, every time I'm on the road, I had to drive to the. To my Rite Aid store, which is my... Explain your... See, your Rite Aid store, people don't know this, it's the Rite Aid up on Fairfax and Sunset. And a lot of times you'll go there after we're done doing stand-up sets at the improv or I gotta the pick comedy up a, store. You got to pick up a prescription. prescription. That's the best time to go and simultaneously the worst time to the go. The freaks come out at night. It's a terrifying place. I will say that on a regular week, weeknight, at after 10 p.m., your Rite Aid looks like the apocalypse is upon us. Yeah, I'm like people are three of you are vampires. Two of you, it's not. It hasn't rained for weeks, and two of you have galoshes on. It's a crazy place. Now people are the not place, dressed for the season. Now the place fits. Yeah, it fits. now everybody in there, you're like you are looking at the guy who is basically wearing a trash bag for pants, and you're like, can I get a pair of those? Can I get a pair of those? What are we doing can this I, now? Are we doing this? Is this happening? That's what you're asking. So uh, so I was heading down there. Anytime I see anyone driving on the road, I'm like, what's this asshole doing? What do you got to be out for, huh? But then you're out. I'm the one who's you're, out. You're also. actually out, too. Uh, so, yeah, I go in there, and I can't stop thinking. Anytime I go into a Rite Aid mm -hmm. I or a drugstore, uh -huh. I think about the bit that we did with Ryan Sickler on our podcast that yep. we revitalized on his podcast, The Honeydew, yep. which was a story on Dumb People Town about a guy who came in 
asking for where the cheese was, where they kept the cheese. Which, by the way, if you're shopping for cheese at a Rite Aid, a CVS, or a Walgreens, and you walk in asking, first of all, where you're it is. not doing it right. You're doing it wrong. And number two, they have a right to be terrified. People started running into the back just because a guy was asking for cheese. That's serial killer behavior. And we are thing, where's the cheese at the right end? And then we were trying to figure out where would it be. So where is the cheese at your right end? Cheese at my right is right by the vacuum bags and the cough drops. So it's not by the coffee and the greeting cards. <laughs> no, why would it be by that? Because it makes sense. Some people would think it's by the box wine and the lawn chairs, but it's not it's by that. It's not. It, it would not be nowhere near the razor blades and the right guard. No, no. It's not near the Halloween decorations and the foam. It's not near the loose leaf paper and the ace <laughs> Bandages. It's not near any of that. Right, I'm putting on the Put it, cough it up. Don't make me laugh. Don't, so it's not near the loose leaf paper or the ace bandages. You're saying that. No. no and no. it's nowhere near the hemorrhoid cream and the Swiffer wet no, ones. No. Okay. And it's not near the batteries and the crutches. Thank God. You can't put them by the batteries and the crutches. How about the hair dryers and the uh, the pomade? No. It's not near that. It's not near that, and it's not near the pantyhose and the Kit Kats. Okay, so fine. stop asking me that. Okay, fine. Uh, I can't stop doing that bit when I'm in there. Uh, at, but I made it through there, and I made it over here, and I am struck by, it, it is a weird po post-apocalyptic it is, feeling man. out no there right out. now. Nobody's out. And the people that are out, there's like suspicion. Yeah, I'm like, what are, you, God, what are you, what are you, why are you not listening, man? Well, maybe, you know, maybe I, they have podcasts to do. Yeah. We got, a, uh, we got a podcast to do. We got a podcast. Then if you're going to say that, then I'm going to be like, okay, all right. I understand. It's all right. It's all right. Well, well you know, I, I know you saw the videos of the people down on spring break. I mean, the, the, the fact that there are people who are, the, the fact that there were people, and this was video shot recently at a hookah bar, you Come like on, sharing hookahs, sharing hookahs like now I, is like having sex with hookers without condoms i mean you're fine no 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 sharing Roll the dice i guess no no sharing hookahs i i wouldn't have shared a hookah in, in 1998 pre 9-11 i wouldn't have shared a hookah no i would not have shared a hookah in 98 share literally that would this is taking me back to those times like it like if you're someone who's a hookah sharer i i don't know if we can be friends period pandemic or not this is this pandemic is for you well so, across what i what i was the point i no, was but trying people to get, were saying this this coronavirus is ruining my spring break i mean there which so, i get it so I'm across, i get it so across the board randy across the board mm -hmm. people are upset about it. that was the sure, point i was trying sure to make. sure they're really it's post-apocalyptic yep. obviously people are upset that they can't connect with other people anymore people are losing lots of money People are uh, getting bored, and they are. We're losing. We're losing tons of money. Our live performances are how we survive. I mean, this is like a bad time to realize. Oh, we're in the business of gathering people that's in awful. a tight space to try and make them laugh. Yeah, that's what we signed up to do. That's what we signed up to do. That's maybe not the best it choice. Didn't take into account the a global pandemic of infectious, infectious diseases, diseases that needed to be fought. So everyone is upset about it. I was trying to think, and I think this could be an interesting topic for our first episode. Yeah, and you guys tweeted us what you think. Who, trying to think of what people, what group of people, what individual people, who is happy that this... Are there people that are happy? Well, we, and, and, and I thought about the thing we did. We did a piece for TBS. We directed and wrote a little piece that Tig Notaro star, starred in. She so was it was who of Cubs fans who were happy that the Cubs, who who it was unhappy when the Cubs won the World Series and in broke 2016 curse. and broke the curse. There had to be at least one, one person, person who we was, figured out who that person was. That was uh, Steve Bartman's fictitious sister, Eve Bartman, yes. who had made a cottage industry out of making merchandise that made fun of her brother, Steve. Right. So like, she, you she, know, God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve Bartman. Like she had twenty thousand adult diapers with Steve's face on it that said the phrase "accidents will happen," so she that she now had to eat. Couldn't download those. You can't get rid of those the, at this time when everyone's so happy. When everyone let him off the hook. So who are the people that are happy that this pandemic? Because there are some that are happy, and we'll get to those people right after this break.
Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Sklar Brothers here. We're still alive. We're still alive. We're recording from uh, my Randy's basement. Uh, and we are going to do a daily podcast. And I hope you guys enjoy this. Sklar Country. The, the virus, virus po- eps or the pandemic pods. What do you guys think? Two guys, one couch. I'm still going to... Pandemic pods. Pandemic, someone on Twitter said, sounded like Pamminic, to which we then said, I'll reach out and touch you even in the face of a global pandemic. Pam Pam Minic. To which Pam Minic (laughs) responded and liked it. Now, we didn't add her. She's just doing sweeps. She's doing searches of her name. Searches of her name. For those who don't know, Pam Minic is a rodeo announcer that we learned about by doing our show Cheap Seeds. Um, and she which, was, by the way, feel free to start a campaign to get cheap seats. Yeah, back why, on the just air. tweet at ESPN. Say where is cheap? We want a marathon of old cheap seats episodes. And let's I try think to it, get that trending. Let's do it, man. I think we can do it. Now is the time to do it. So, so, so Pam Minnick looked like an adult a version of a child beauty pageant. Star. We said adult Jean Benet Ramsey. Well, that wasn't that respect. Maybe that's going too far, but that was, never made it in the show. No, but uh, she was an adult. We said she's an adult child. Beauty pageant, Beauty pageant star, star, and she did. She really did. She had the cowboy hat on. She had the costume, a lot of makeup, and, smiled a lot. Yeah. So Pam Minnick and we wrote a lot of poetry to her uh, about Pam Minnick. I spread the ball around to all fields. You spread the ball around to all fields like Tony Gwinnick, Pam Minnick. Unlike Ted Kennedy, I would never take you to Chappaquiddick, Pam, Pam Minnick, Minnick. So. She then found out that we were doing this, and then she just hopped on board. Became a fan. Was so a fan. I love this. Much respect for Pam Minnick. Uh, so before we hit the break, we we were trying to talk about who people, would be happy that this awful global pandemic, this COVID nineteen, there's got to be some. There's got to be some people. That so are my happy. first thought, and we talked about this on our other podcast, View from the Cheap Seats, the Houston Astros. Yeah, that's a group of people that I think are happy that this came along the moment that it came along. They may not be happy, but they're not mad. Altuve is dancing right now and not letting someone rip his shirt off. Because he has a buzzer underneath. He's excited because, and I know where you're going with this, Jay, that they suddenly, let's say the baseball season starts five months from now. Okay. We get like a very short, maybe 40 games. Yep. You know, 50 games. Let's say it starts in August and we get the month of August and the month of September and they play every day. And we get somewhere in the neighborhood of 55 games or something like that. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So it's a third of the season, approximately. Mm-hmm. And but they get to play. That doesn't add up, but yeah. Yeah, 50, nope. 50, and 50 is 150. 50, 55, 55, 55 is 165. And there are 162 games. How does that math not add up? It's three more than the actual It's number. not fuzzy math. So the point is that if they were to do that, and guys got back and played, even if they're playing not in front of fans, but the sport is back and people can watch it and people are happy about it. Are they really going to be throwing at the Astros heads like we were expecting at the beginning of April, right? at the end of March? These guys, guys were vilified. Yeah. These guys were vilified. They were thought to be a group of people that messed with America's pastime, that cheated in a way that ruined the innocence of the game, I guess, that had come back since steroids ruined the innocence of so the game. So that now people are like, if you throw at the Astros' heads... The You're Astros, being petty. Yeah, come on. Look at that. We, we Let's made be through, glad we have ba- baseball back. We made it through a pandemic. You're going to now throw at my head because of this? And suddenly they have a leg to stand on. You know, it's almost like, well, thank you. Thank you, COVID-19. You gave us uh, you gave us relief. So one of the Houston things. Astros. So we've been trying to figure out what are things we can watch. Well, wait. Let me add one more person to uh, who I think yeah, well, is happy think? that because I want you to talk about your McMillions. Oh, I will. One more thing that I'm hoping that I think people that, who is happy this happened. Yeah, who, Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, the whiner. Who um, we're going to give David Spade credit. David Spade credit. We saw him at the Walker and called him Walker Texas Raper. Fan, D Spade. Feel free to call him that. Um, By the way, David Spade will be on David Spade's show Lights Out. He's going to do like a sequestered Skyped in panel that we're going to do on Wednesday, March 25th. So watch us on that. Hey, hey, hey. So, um, yeah. So I think Weinstein. Weinstein. Ecstatic. Because, yes, he's going away to prison and that doesn't change anything and that sucks. But he is not being spoken about in way like we'd be spending a lot of time talking about Harvey Weinstein right now. Right. So he kind of slips up and the way got off the hook. Not off the hook, 
but he's not in the light. And so what that got me starting to think of, and this will be a viewing recommendation to you guys, is the documentary on HBO. If you don't have HBO, um, maybe I'll just... If you don't know what HBO is. (laughs) Okay. So HBO uh, documentaries did a thing called McMillions, Mm -hmm. which I... By the way, I'm a huge fan of Nate McMillian. That's Nate Former McMillan. coach of the that's Nate and McMillan. player for the that's Seattle not, Supersonics. It's not McMillions. Portland's that. coach, Nate McMillian. That's Nate McMillan. Yep. McMillions is the documentary they made about how the McDonald's Monopoly game uh-huh. was compromised <laughs> by the mob in Florida and like a so, Jewish guy. So funny. Uncle Jerry. <laughs> Uncle Jerry, and there's another Jerry, like from the mob, and those guys got together. Two this, Jerry's. I'm not going to give it away because it's Don't definitely give it away. worth watching. I want to see it. But is it is it better than the documentary King of Kong? It's. I would almost put it in the same ballpark because the characters are, the people in it are like so perfect. ridiculous. Like the FBI guy who wants to go undercover and start this whole thing. It's so great. great. Everyone is perfect. Yeah. And what I love about it, what I was fascinated about it is. The the time that they caught everyone and the case came to light and yep. everyone's outrage was boiling to it was at a boiling yep, point. Yep. August two thousand one. Yeah, August two thousand one. So everyone was the FBI spent all this time. Yep, yep. They were digging into this case. Yep, and then suddenly they're like, "No, nah, it's over." Well, I guess we got to do real. I guess work. I guess we can't be. I can't. I guess we can't be filling up our file books with McRibs. Right. That's done. That's over. Because now we got to deal with people attacking yeah, now we America. Got, exactly. And finding out, using the FBI for that. So in that vein, the Astros are happy. Astros we're are kinda, happy. We're off it. Weinstein Harvey Weinstein is happy. I can't really think of anyone else who's a deplorable human being right now. Maybe. R. Kelly, maybe. R. Kelly. Some of the heat's off him. Logan Paul. Some of the heat's off him. Um, I don't know. It, it just does kind of feel like... Like how many influencers are going to like go around and start touching people in yeah. public play. You know what I mean? Ha, 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 that video, that's a Logan Paul video waiting to happen. Go for it, bro. I come guess. at it. Come at us on this couch, bro. Yeah. We're right here. There's a spot in between us that we're not going to let you sit on, bro. Come get in there, bro. Get, <laughs> get up, get out from under there, get bro. Get down underneath there, bro. <laughs> come on, bro. That's our that for those who don't know. It's our those Hawaiian are, Raiders fan, Hawaiian Raiders fans. Tua, Tua Nua Nuance, and, and his brother Chewy, <laughs> Nua Nuance. Kenny and their son. They Kenny, have a shared. They, son? Have, a, <laughs> they have a son named Kenny Junior. Kenny. Now Jun- there is no one in the name in Kenny the family name Can Senior, but they called him Kenny Junior. Both these guys are over four hundred pounds, and the kid is twelve. And Both is these guys 280. are over four hundred pounds, and they've worn flip flops to a funeral. Get and down it, from there, bro. Hey, get down. Hey, help lift the casket, bro. Hey, put hey, bro. down the kettle chips and let's lift up that casket, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Raiders are on in an hour, bro. Groot is up, bro. He's knocking wood, bro. Come on, bro. Uh, so, uh, you know, for me, this 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 period of time does wash away some of those things that happened before because there is a feeling of this, unlike I've ever had over anything else, where it is there is life before this thing started yeah, and there is life after yep. it, and and yep. those things will never be the same again. We're gonna become. A nation of Howie Mandel's. We're going to become a nation. And he's not even American. Uh, right. We're going to become a nation of Howard Hughes's. I hope not. I was thinking about that. Just people germophobically. Isolating. Isolated in our own little airplane hangers. The Simpsons did it so well with Mr. Burns. Feet in Kleenex the, boxes. Shoes in Kleenex boxes that we've used. That is what we are going to become. And the crazy thing is you just... Right now, it's the beginning, so we almost don't even know the severity of everything. And maybe, you know, maybe, maybe things accelerate at a rate that we don't even understand, yeah. and they find ways to. I would vaccinate. love it. I mean, I would love for what we're doing right now to feel like ridiculous, a quaint, absurd thing. Right. Nothing would make me happier than for us to look like fools for doing this right now. But we're here for you, and we're going to be here answering all the questions you have. Uh, talking about the things you want to talk about. I want to talk about before we get out of here. Before we get out of here. In this first episode. Music and or songs. 
to listen to during the pandemic. And music and or songs that on title alone are inappropriate for pandemic listens. I think something that's appropriate, don't stand so close to me, police. There you go. There you go. That's an edict. Some that's inappropriate, touch me by the doors. Or I touch myself. Yeah. Well, Well, that actually is appropriate. That is appropriate. You can do that. I would say. Do a lot of it. Just Purell afterwards and before. Before you touch anything else, any surface after that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say that not in a pandemic. Appropriate. Can't touch this. Uh huh. Not appropriate. Too legit to quit. Which, I mean, he wasn't too legit to quit. He was not. You can't make a statement like that. Uh huh. You can't start hanging out with the Falcons, mm-hmm. the team that never won a Super Bowl. That's right. And say, we're all too legit to quit. You're That's putting right. your stank, That's right. MC Hammer, on those people. What other what other songs are appropriate and not appropriate? I mean, I don't know. Okay, I want to hear your songs. Reach out and touch someone. That's one you can't do. Reach out and touch someone is a that's an old AT and T. That was that wasn't a song. That's not a song. Reach out and touch someone. That came from a song. No, it didn't. It did not. All right, I don't know anymore. All right, let's hear yours. Uh, favorite pandemic songs. I'll say th- I'm going to give you an album to listen to that is really beautiful and really cool. Uh, it's called the album's called Neon Skyline, and the artist is called his name is Andy Schauf, S H A U F, Canadian, beautiful voice, very Paul la- Simony. Yeah, kind of Paul Simony, very layered, thoughtful music. He did a whole album about going down to his local bar. And everything that surrounds that and him with a, losing a girlfriend and all that stuff and, and relationships. And it's it's just beautiful. All things we can't do anymore. Yeah. Going down to your local bar. So um, check that out. And, Neon Skyline. And I will say this. You know, for many years and for, I would say for decades, people made fun of Brian Wilson for the way he lived. He may be the guy that we're all looking to. He's the most prepared for an outbreak like COVID-19. Yep. Brian Wilson, put a sandbox in your living room and then hide under your covers. Put us in your ears if you can every week. Hopefully we- we'll walk with you in moments of quiet solitude. And in the moments where you see only one set of footsteps, just know we're podcasting for you. Yep. And that's when we carried you. We're the Sklar Brothers. This is Sklarbro Country, the virus apps or the pandemic pods. You decide. During the week, we're going to drop a new one. Every Five time. a week. Every single day, we're going to give you something. All right, guys, be safe out there. Love each other. Love yourselves. We're out. I got so tired of calling this your disease.